important pests. 70% productivity, high income from sustainable yields able to cover average costs per hectare. For more details, visit Dynalab International Zambia Limited at plot number 26 Joseph Mundo Road or contact the agronomist at 0977-405-531 or front office at 0211-232-377. Use DI Grow and thank the green leaf. Good afternoon and welcome to the program for the uh, Dynalab where we are looking at the agri, the theme which is the Agri Nuggets with Dynalab International Zambia Limited. My name is Christabel Munga and the topic at hand that we are looking at today, we are looking at preparation for the farming season. And to help me discuss this topic in the studio, I have a guest who will explain, uh, explain to us what uh, this uh, topic of discussion is all about today. And in the studio, I have Mr. Manex Ngono, who is the agro agronomist for Dynalab. Welcome to the program. Thank you, uh, Christopher. Okay. And uh, welcome, viewers. All right. Mm. And at some point, we'll be able to receive some text from you, our viewers, where you'll be uh, texting us wanting to know uh, some of these products and also how to go about it on 0977 4055 Well, as we get into the discussion, Mr. Ngono, tell us what is Dynalab? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Dynalab is basically a multi-level marketing company or network marketing company okay. that deals in a wide range of uh, products. Um, that is products for human use mm -hmm. as well as organic uh, foliar fertilizers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When you say human use, what, what does that mean? Well, it's just a wide range of products for personal care. Mm -hmm like soaps, uh, toothpaste, mm -hmm. uh, 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 lotions, okay. and uh, uh, products for detoxification of, of, of our blood, you okay. know, to, for cleansing and detoxification, mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, different products that we can use, coffees, um, products for hypertension, for those that have diabetes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, nutritional supplements, mm -hmm. just quite a wide range. Yeah, okay. of products that we as humans okay. can use and improve our well-being. Okay, generally Dynalab is known for products of health issues. And what motivated you to uh, venture into agriculture? Well, uh, it's, it's the understanding or the realization that uh, uh, our environment has been disturbed mm -hmm. in discriminate use of chemicals mm -hmm. uh, around our environment in the soil and what impact those chemicals have brought okay uh, you know that most chemicals are, are dangerous are injurious or they just cause a lot of uh, problems to the to the environment mm -hmm. they are useful organisms that uh, uh, work well with the uh, farming mm -hmm. and when chemicals are applied either to the soil or sprayed on crops the, those chemicals tend to, to affect those useful organisms. And when those useful organisms are, are destroyed or are killed, they will not be able to perform their, intent, their God given mm -hmm. intended purpose for improvement of agriculture. Okay. Yes. So uh, it's that realization that Danilab stepped in mm -hmm. uh, to come up with products that would not uh, disturb the environment. Mm -hmm. which we call eco-friendly products okay. yes that will not disturb the environment where we are operating from okay. yeah, basically all right so what are some of the key activities that uh, these farmers need to prepare for the farming season yes the farming season is just around the corner and uh, farmers need to to engage themselves in certain activities mm -hmm. I have tried to uh, uh, classify these activities in two broad uh, 
um, categories. The mm -hmm. first category is up updating information. Okay. Yeah, farmers need to up update information time and again from season to season mm -hmm. because there's a lot of research that is going on in the area of agri agriculture. Okay. And so time and again, there are new varieties that come on the market, mm -hmm. new techniques of farming, you know, even new products. Okay. Like products, uh, fertilizers, and also fungicides, uh, insecticides, and as well as herbicides, and many other products that farmers need to use. And so, if a, if a farmer remains uh, with with the old ways of doing things, mm -hmm. they lag behind. You find that their productivity remains low, okay. while other farmers are, are advancing. Certain farmers remain remain behind, and mm -hmm. the, that reduces on their growth, and they remain dependent. Mm -hmm. On, on either government or their relatives for support. So we do not want farmers to be dwarfed mm -hmm. and remain stagnant because agriculture is a business. Yes. And so if every farmer takes agriculture as a business, not as a traditional activity, it means therefore that they should be looking for new information that helps them to grow their farming uh, uh, business. Okay, so yeah, they so need to improve They their need soil. to update their knowledge. Okay. Now this knowledge can be gotten from different sources. Mm -hmm. If they are able, if they are literate, if, if a farmer is literate, they can source for information through reading okay. uh, uh, journals or maybe any books that have to do with agriculture. Or they can sit and listen to what we are doing right now mm -hmm. and pick information and make use of it. Okay. Uh, those that can't read and write, they can go to their uh, camp officers, these agricultural extension officers, and seek for help, mm -hmm. seek for latest information on how they can improve their farming. Okay. The second category of uh, activity is is embedded in what i call the five critical questions that farmers need to ask themselves mm -hmm. and number one one question is uh, is is the question what to produce mm -hmm. the second one is the uh, uh, how much to produce okay the third one is uh, how to produce the fourth one is when to produce mm -hmm. and the fifth question every farmer must ask themselves before the season is where to sell okay. so each of these questions, the five critical questions uh, are very important to every farmer as they prepare for the season. Now, mm -hmm. even if I've, I've, I've said them in, in this order, this order doesn't mean what to produce becomes the first one. Mm -hmm. According to practicality of things, number one should be where to sell. Uh, before every before farmer decides to decides, plant yes. in this season, they must know where they're going to sell the product. Mm -hmm. So where to sell becomes very important in this case. Okay. If you do not know where to sell the, 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 your produce, then why should you, why should you plant grow? the seed? Why yeah. should you grow? Because this is where we have seen some farmers uh, at some point, they grew cotton, and because uh, the prices were so low, they got frustrated and they bent their cotton. <laughs> so we don't want to see such things happening. Okay. So market must be guaranteed mm -hmm. uh, where a farmer is going to take the produce after harvesting. So uh, where to sell becomes very important. And what to produce now? Decisions have to be made. Mm -hmm. Am I going to plant maize only? Am I planting soybeans only? Or I'm doing a combination of soybeans and maize in the season. Am I mm -hmm. planting cabbage? What other crops can I grow? Mm -hmm. So all that information must be looked for. Uh, on what to produce also, what varieties of crops am I growing? Mm -hmm. So uh, where am I getting the seed from okay. for these all crops that. that I'm going to grow? Yes. Okay. So because there are people who sell seed that is not certified. Mm -hmm. And uh, unsatisfied seed is dangerous. It's, it's, it's not good for a farmer okay. because they tend to get very low yields mm -hmm. and the crop just doesn't perform well. Okay. So farmers must decide that they will get satisfied seed. Even if it's a little bit expensive, uh, they can still afford it. The mm -hmm. results are always good according to the breeder's test. Okay. Yes, and, 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 and work that has been put in. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that's that's one question that the farmer must address. Okay. The question of how much to produce that depends on now uh, availability of land, mm -hmm. the scale of farming. Yes, the, uh, a farmer who has two two hectares mm -hmm. only, if they want to produce five hectares, they can't because the land becomes a constraint in that case. Mm -hmm. And so the question of how much to produce would depend also on uh, number one on the availability of arable land. Mm -hmm. Secondly, also it would depend on the availability of resources, okay. the capital now to invest in, in scaling up the agricultural uh, uh, 
pr uh, programs. Mm -hmm. And then the next question that they need to answer in this case is uh, how to produce. Now, how to produce is ways or systems or methods they're going to apply. Mm -hmm. Are they going to use tractors to plow the land? Okay. If they don't have machinery, tractors and perhaps uh, 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 tractor drone implements, are mm. they, do they have the oxen to use to do the plowing? Are they going to hire? Are they going to hire oxen or hire a tractor or anything of that sort? So these are decisions that will have to be made on how to produce. So okay. it's also systems or methods of producing. Okay. Now, depending on the decision they have made on how much to produce, if they're going to produce 20 hectares of soya beans, it mm -hmm. means that's quite vast. Okay. If they don't have machinery uh, to do the, the other works like weeding or whatever, they will have to hire, they have to decide to hire a lot of uh, human labor yeah. at a cost as mm -hmm. well. So there are all these things that the farmers think about as they are preparing for, preparing for this season now. Mm -hmm. the, the next thing that we, the, they should consider is the question of uh, of uh, when to 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 produce when mm -hmm. to produce it means the timing now of planting that the particular season. yes the seed now uh, when time has been lost for planting for planting it will affect every other agronomic practice that the farmer needs to do on the farm so they have to be they have to plant on time. on time and you know that for maize and perhaps soybeans uh, we have always told the farmers that they should plant with the first rains. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, way, way back, I think in the 80s to early 90s, we used to receive rain for by 24th October. Yes. As we ce celebrate our independence, independence, we could get our first heavy rains. Mm -hmm. But you know, due to climate change, a lot of things have changed in terms of how our rainfall pattern has become. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes rains can come in December, mm -hmm. sometimes in January. You know, and so forth. That has affected uh, certain decisions in, uh, as to when farmers should plant. But generally, we still maintain that farmers should plant with the first good rains. But there are times whereby the first rain comes, then again, the time elapses for a farmer to get the maybe the second rain, as you are putting it, the first rains for the rains now to actually start. So you'd find that maybe the seed in the ground there it doesn't grow very well. Yeah, it, it definitely. Uh, if farmers have planted with the first rains and then there's a dry spell, yes. maybe two or three weeks, that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. You find that the seed begins to, to rot in the ground because of too much heat and, you know, uh, that's already uh, in a, a, a risk. Mm -hmm. Farming has risks and certainties, but it's good to risk because uh, s uh, most times farmers have risked and they've, they've still made, made it. Okay. Uh, rainfall is not... Uh, a determinant of a human being. This is an, an, an act of God. Mm -hmm. He's the one who opens the skies to give us the rains. Yes. No human being can claim that they can bring rainfall. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I, I would, my, 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 my wish has always been that uh, we can get the farmers to a stage where they stop depending on rainfall. Okay. When we talk about agriculture as a business, we mm -hmm. cannot uh, sit here and uh, and, and the thing that farmers should always depend on Wait rainfall. for the rain season to Now, come. these are smallholder and emergent farmers I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The people that produce about 80 to 90 percent of the food that we depend on in this country. Mm -hmm. Whereas the 15 to 20 percent around there comes from the commercial farmers who are cultivating on, uh, on uh, good arable land, fertile mm -hmm. soils, mm -hmm. and land that is, that is closer to the road network or to okay. the rail system or to the, to the good tarmacs that have been that have been uh, uh, put up mm -hmm. and uh, they don't usually sell their produce to us mainly to either go into the industry mm -hmm. for processing into different things or they will export okay. but most of the small scale farmers they will grow food that we eat in this country mm -hmm. and these are the, peop the people that have challenges they can't even afford irrigation facilities okay. so that they can grow this food from january to december throughout to increase on their, their their productivity, to increase on their on their income, and to grow more food for this country, so that we can have food security for our country, and perhaps we can have more sub, sub, we can have surplus to export to our neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's a challenge uh, uh, posed when when there's a dry spell. But okay. we 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 hope that uh, uh, the coming new dawn government mm -hmm. uh, will 
will be pragmatic, will be proactive in the area of trying to, to empower the small holder farmers with irrigation facilities so that we can see some of those challenges of, of, of climate change being addressed. Okay. All right, you've heard for yourselves, viewers. Uh, before we continue with the discussion, let's uh, take a break, a short break. We'll be right back. Have you ever thanked a green leaf for the food it produces to feed nations and continents? Dynalab International Zambia Limited, a partner with farmers, brings to you DI Grow, organic plus foliar fertilizers and biopesticides for the improvement of both macro and micro soil nutrients depression of soil-borne diseases, quick root development and growth, robust vegetative growth, enhanced flowering and fruiting, control of fall armyworms, tuta absoluta, and many other important pests, 70% productivity, high income from sustainable yields able to cover average costs per hectare. For more details, visit Dynalab International Zambia Limited at plot number 26 Joseph Mulo Road or contact the agronomist at 0977-405-531 or front office at 0211-232-377. Use DI Grow and thank the Green Leaf. All right, welcome back. We are still discussing the topic, which is preparation for the coming season with Agri Nuggets, uh, Dynalab International. With me here, I still have Mr. Manex Ngono. Mr. Manex, uh, what is the role of Dynalab in the coming farming season? Two things. Mm -hmm. Dynalab shall continue um, providing information, okay. training to all the farmers, Mm -hmm. uh, so that farmers can get the best out of the season. Okay. Giving them information regarding farming mm -hmm. of different crops. We will be coming here and using different platforms, okay. radio and TV, to try and give as much as, uh, uh, information as possible mm -hmm. to help a farmer improve okay. their skills of farming. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we have products. Uh, that farmers can use for their farming, okay. which will be distributing uh, uh, across the country. Mm -hmm. So farmers will meet us in different places of our operation mm -hmm. to access these products. So these are things that we'll be doing. That's our role. Okay. And where can uh, these farmers access your products? Uh, here in Lusaka, we, we have uh, several shops where farmers within can access our products. Uh, we have four products apparently, mm -hmm. uh, two are already on the market, the okay. other two will be coming on the market soon in this season. Okay. Uh, we have DI Grow Green, mm -hmm. DI Grow Green foliar fertilizer is for root development okay. and for vegetative growth. Mm -hmm. And then the DI Grow Red which is for flowering and fruiting. We have also another fertilizer that is coming. Mm. It's called Diagro Bio 8. It's also for root development and uh, for vegetative growth. Okay. We also have another bio product called Diagro Green K. This is a bio pesticide for mm -hmm. control of different kinds of pests that chew and bite our crops uh, and as well as bore into fruits. Mm -hmm. Uh, this one is purely uh, an organic product. Okay. There's no withdrawal period in making use of this product. Mm -hmm. So farmers have uh, an opportunity to access these products in this coming season so that they can improve their productivity. Okay. And uh, you will find these products uh, within here in Lusaka, mm -hmm. at our main uh, office in Rhodes Park, okay. Joseph Miller Road, plot number 26. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a shop at downtown shopping complex and opposite downtown there's another complex called Canele House. We have another shop there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another shop at Limbe Complex near the post office somewhere there, okay. main post office. We have another shop at uh, Arcade's shopping complex mm -hmm. and also at Lewanika Mall. Okay. Yes, within Lusaka. Other than these uh, 
shops within Lusaka. We are also found in places outside Lusaka, mm -hmm. in almost every province, almost every province. Okay. In southern province, you can catch us in Livingstone. Mm -hmm. We are in Choma, as well as Monze. We are in Chipata, eastern province. Northwestern, we are in Solwezi. Western, we are in Mongu. We are in Kitu and Dola, uh, Kasama, Mansa, Kawe, uh, as well as Mumbwa. So farmers can access our products around those areas I've mentioned. Mm -hmm. Other than our Dynalab uh, shops, we have also uh, engaged agro dealers within Lusaka and we're still engaging more outside Lusaka. So mm -hmm. those farmers that uh, cannot have access to our shops, they can visit different agro dealers and they'll be able to get our products. Okay. All right, uh, our viewers, you can continue sending your text messages on 0977 0977405531. And Mr. Manex will be able to answer to your questions in our next program. And now, as we come to the end, Mr. Manex, your closing remarks. My closing remarks are that uh, I, I'm, I'm inviting every farmer out there Mm -hmm. to keep on following us. Okay. Uh, every two weeks I'll be coming here mm -hmm. with a new subject to educate you mm -hmm. how you can improve your agriculture. And uh, I want you to be attentive to each and every program that I'll bring to you because uh, at some point I'll be giving hampers to you farmers mm -hmm. to appreciate your participation in our program. So please listen to us attentively. This is not just for you to win hampers, but also to impart and empower you with information that is going to make you a proper farmer out there. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for showing up, uh, Mr. Manix. You're welcome. Well, we've been discussing on a topic uh, which says a preparation for the farming season. And our theme is Agri Nuggets with Dynalab International Zambia. In the studio to help me discuss that topic, I was joined by Mr. Manix Ngono. My name is Christabel Munga. Join us again next time. Bye-bye. Have you ever thanked a green leaf for the food it produces to feed nations and continents? Dynalab International Zambia Limited, a partner with farmers, brings to you DI Grow, organic plus foliar fertilizers and biopesticides for the improvement of both macro and micro soil nutrients, depression of soil borne diseases, <laughs> quick root development and growth, robust vegetative growth, enhanced flowering and fruiting. Control of fall armyworms, tuta absoluta, and many other important pests. 70% productivity, high income from sustainable yields, able to cover average costs per hectare. For more details, visit Dynalab International Zambia Limited at plot number 26 Joseph Mundo Road. Or contact the agronomist at 0977-405-531 or front office at 0211-2500.